Hello everyone. Uh, I want to give you a bird's eye view of what I'm doing, my own particular diet strategy. I wanted to kind of summarize some of the most important things I'm doing with my health and maybe somebody could be helped from this. Health is everything. Don't expect to get another body. Um, for all we know, death is a one-way ticket into oblivion. And when your body dies, you're gone forever. It's kind of like, uh, you know, that movie, All Dogs Go to Heaven. And the pink dog is saying, You can never come back. You can never come back. You can never come back. That's what life is like. You die, you can never come back. So we have to prioritize the health of our physical bodies. But anyways, let's get into some things. So... Overall, what I do is I try to avoid processed food. That's a very obvious thing. Um, a lot of these processed foods are filled with chemicals. There's so many bad chemicals. Some of the worst I can think of are um, MSG, fake sugars like aspartame and NutraSweet and all these kind of fake sugars. They can damage your brain. They're excitotoxins. Same thing with MSG. MSG is ubiquitous in all kinds of foods, especially in, you know, Chinese food. So you got to be really careful when it comes to, like, restaurants. Just, just avoid restaurant food if you can. So when it comes to diet, like, what do you eat? Who do you believe, right? There's so many different dietary theories out there. Some people say eat a lot of fat. Some people say, oh, no, you got to eat a lot of carbs. Carbs should be the basis of your diet. Personally, I try to take a balanced approach. I don't completely eliminate carbs, but I, I do eat a higher fat diet. I tend to eat a lot of healthier fats like coconut oil, avocados, olive oil. Um, but I eat carbs too. You know, I, peanut butter. Forgot to mention peanut butter. Wouldn't want to forget that. You know, but you got to make sure you're eating the healthy peanut butter, you know, without hydrogenated oils, without added sugar and things like that. Peanut butter is actually a great staple because it's pretty cheap. Heck, you can like really fill up on peanut butter. It's very, very filling and you can make smoothies out of it. What I do is I put peanut butter, frozen bananas, um, a little bit of a sweetener like some honey or stevia if you're trying to lower your sugar load. And ice and that combination peanut butter bananas sweetener and ice and water that is a delicious smoothie now a lot of people are against peanut butter because of aflatoxins you know peanuts can be contaminated with a mold and these aflatoxins can damage your liver but peanut butter is tightly regulated and they monitor how much aflatoxin gets in that peanut butter and it's not much very, we're talking very, very small amounts of aflatoxin. And if you're doing everything else right for your liver, I think your liver can handle a little bit of this aflatoxin. And the benefits of peanuts are far outweigh the potential negatives. And also, you should get organic peanuts because non-organic peanuts can be contaminated with all kinds of pesticide residues because they rotate peanuts with cotton. When they're growing the peanuts, they rotate it with cotton and then they'll grow peanuts and they'll grow cotton and cotton is heavily sprayed. So stick with organic peanut butter. No hydrogenated oils, that's really important. And the hydrogenated oils are just awful because what they do is that's what truly causes heart disease is these hydrogenated oils. It's not a natural form of fat. They like It really messes up the fat. It's so bad for you. So you know, there's even brands of peanut butter that just have only peanuts, just peanuts. That's what you got to look for. Now, one other important thing to mention about peanut butter is that you'll, you'll occasionally see in the news that there's salmonella outbreaks from the peanut butter. People get sick from salmonella. Now, if you want to prevent getting sick from salmonella, what you got to do is buy a bunch of peanut butter ahead of time. Buy so much peanut butter that you have a backlog of peanut butter like at least a month so you're not not buying new peanut butter because it's the new peanut butter 
that's where you're taking a risk because they, they don't know yet if there's going to be a recall. So have a bunch of peanut butter and let it sit around your house for at least like a month and that way you can be checking the news to make sure there wasn't a peanut recall. Because if there is a peanut recall, it's okay because you haven't eaten that peanut butter yet. You see? So it's really the, the newest peanut butter. If you buy peanut butter right off the shelf in the store, that's the risk because you don't know if there's going to be a recall. Like, you might be the person that gets salmonella. So let's talk a little bit about the macronutrient ratios. So protein, fats, and carbohydrates. From the research I've done, you do not want to be eating too much protein. That can be especially hard on your kidneys. So you want to kind of have a lower protein diet, higher fat, uh, minimal carbs. But I want to avoid making the mistake of pushing a one-size-fits-all diet. I don't know your own biology. I don't know what's going on with your body. For all I know, you need a higher protein diet and maybe you need low fat and high carb. I don't know. You know, I think people are different. I think our our genetics are different. So why would we all require the exact same diet? It doesn't make sense. So most importantly, listen to your own body. Try to get in touch with your own eating instincts. Like what does your body actually want? Now, don't get it confused with just eating whatever you crave. I mean, you might crave McDonald's cheeseburgers, but you shouldn't go eat McDonald's cheeseburgers. What I'm saying is eat within the realm of natural whole foods what your body craves because your body's cravings could be literally your body signaling what it needs as far as nutrients. Certain minerals maybe you're lacking. You might have a craving for particular food because that's that food has the minerals and the nutrients you need. So it's important to get in touch with your instincts. I do believe in that. And the concept is it's easier to get in touch with your instincts once you eliminate all the processed foods and you're just sticking with whole natural foods because your body can get confused with all these chemicals and these addictive substances they add into the food. It's messing with the signaling. So stick with whole natural foods and your body's actually going to start telling you what it needs, what it requires in the moment from day to day. And it could change. Sometimes you might need a lot more carbohydrates for whatever reason. And sometimes you might need a lot more fat. Maybe sometimes you need more protein. It's always best to stick with your own cravings. Um, I think a, a staple of our diet should be uh, steamed vegetables. Steamed vegetables seems like a pretty safe way to go as far as making um, something a staple. Because it's just filled with minerals and um, steaming is a pretty harmless way to cook something. So, you know, as opposed to frying where you're having to fry oils, that could be potentially bad because you're damaging those oils in the cooking process. So I tend to eat all my fats raw. I don't like to cook fat as a general rule. Now, some people are probably thinking, well, why don't you just eat your vegetables raw? What's the point of steaming them? Raw foodism is very popular these days. It seems to be very trendy to be a raw foodist. The reason I'm not a raw foodist, the reason I cook my vegetables, they're so much easier to digest when you cook them. Okay, we're not really meant to be eating all this fiber. I mean, this um, cellulose. You, You know, you eat like a cabbage and you're gonna get gas you know you eat a raw cabbage or raw broccoli you just can't process that fiber so steaming it is a way to break down that fiber and you're gonna absorb the food better you're gonna absorb those minerals all those antioxidants better you know they figured out that if you cook a tomato you absorb like way more lycopene and same with a carrot you cook a carrot you absorb way more beta carotene in that carrot Really, cooking is very important to break down the food and help with the process of digestion. I, I've i talked to raw foodists, and a lot of them get gas. Okay, I used to be a raw foodist. I used to get horrendous, you know, digestive disturbances when I was a raw foodist. Like, you know, you just feel all this fiber trying to push its way through your colon, and it's like, whoa, way too much, way too much fiber. Now, obviously, raw food is important, and... Especially certain things you definitely don't want to cook. You don't want to be cooking your fruit, obviously. So 
If you're going to be eating fruit in your diet, which you should eat some fruit, I would recommend eating um, the lower glycemic fruits like berries. Tend to t- I tend to focus on lower sugar fruits. Berries are great. All the kinds of berries: blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, whatever. You know, you can get a you can go to a store and get a mixed bag of frozen berries, and it's going to be much cheaper than if you were to try to buy those berries fresh. So I recommend frozen berries as a as another staple. Like make a smoothie every day to get your antioxidants your, from the fruit. A frozen berry smoothie. And you can throw a chunk of avocado in that smoothie or, a, you know, a, t- a tablespoon of olive oil. You want to add some kind of fat into your smoothie because that's going to increase the absorption of all those antioxidants and all those minerals in the smoothie. And, and it goes the same thing with steamed vegetables. Eat your steamed vegetables with some kind of fat. And when you eat food with fat, it helps the absorption of all the minerals and, um, and the antioxidants. And so like when I'm cooking my steamed vegetables, I'll put some grass-fed butter on there. So I'm not a vegan. I do eat some grass-fed butter, and I think it's important because there's a lot of nutrients like vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is vital for your bone health, your dental health, and uh, it actually prevents the hardening of the arteries because vitamin K2 makes sure that the calcium you're eating gets put into the bones and your teeth as opposed to depositing itself in your soft tissues like your arteries right you want the calcium to be in your bones not your arteries the calcium gets deposited in your arteries you're on your way to a heart attack that's calcification of the arteries that's what you want to avoid okay now let's talk about meat there is far too many vegans acting way too confident that everyone could be fine on a vegan diet and everyone could be fine on a vegetarian diet they don't know The science is not all in, okay? Like, we don't know the details of our biology, and literally some people might actually need meat to be healthy. And if they do, their health should take priority over the life of an animal. Human life is just so much more important than the life of an animal. So if someone needs to eat meat to be healthy, they should do that, by all means. I don't feel that I do need to eat meat. Um... Actually, I shouldn't say I'm 100% vegetarian because I do eat some smoked salmon. Every now and then I'll make an exception for smoked salmon um, and shrimp. You know, wild shrimp, of course. When it comes to seafood, you always want to get the wild caught stuff. Um, I would never eat raw fish or anything like that because you'd get a parasite. So make sure when it comes to seafood, make sure it's all cooked. Now, the reason I'll eat seafood from time to time is because... Just in case, it's like a safety precaution. Just in case there's some nutrients in seafood, it's like, why not? I think my body can handle a little bit of seafood. Even if there's a bit of toxins in the ocean, it's better to make sure I'm getting everything because I don't want to be deficient in something. And that way I get some B12, I get some other nutrients that might be in these uh, seafood. You know, this the long chain fatty acids for your brain and so on. Um, I also eat egg yolks for that purpose. As uh, Egg yolk for me is, I view it as kind of a nutritional supplement. It's just got all the omega-3s for your brain. And that way you don't have to buy a fish oil supplement or a krill oil. And you don't have to bother with all that if you're just eating some like free-range egg yolks. And I eat them raw. So that, that pretty much covers the animal foods that I eat. It would be like egg yolks grass-fed butter, and um, a little bit of seafood from time to time. If you do choose to eat seafood, um, and if you're worried about the toxins in the ocean, the PCBs and the uh, mercury and heavy metals or whatever might be in the ocean, first of all, don't overdo it. Second of all, you can eat the seafood with chlorella, and chlorella will absorb a lot of the uh, radiation if there's in if radiation is in the food. Uh, it'll absorb a lot of the mercury. Um, chlorella is very good for that. And also, you can eat it with activated charcoal or just take activated charcoal regularly. That's something I do as well, and that helps just detoxify 
you know, your body of any toxins you might have accumulated. Activated charcoal is great, and it's also great to have on hand in case you ever get uh, food sickness, right? In case you ever did get salmonella. Let's say one of my egg yolks was contaminated with salmonella. It's very rare, by the way, and that risk is greatly over-exaggerated if you're eating the healthiest eggs from healthy chickens that are free-range, and it's just much less likely to be contaminated with salmonella. But in the off chance that I got salmonella poisoning, you just consume a lot of activated charcoal, and you're good to go. That'll actually take care of it for most people. And then you can do things to ramp up your immune system. You can just start eating tons of raw garlic and things like that. Different herbs that are antibacterial, antiviral. Now that pretty much covers the basics, but the very basics. I could go way in depth and all this stuff and I could make this video an hour long, but I wanted to kind of make this an overall bird's eye view. Now I'm not saying that eating healthy is gonna make you live forever. That's not the point. I'm not saying that you're going to stop aging if you eat this way. But I do think that eating super healthy is going to slow down the aging process because there's all these phytonutrients and phytochemicals and minerals and the body is like a machine. You need to give it all the building blocks and you need to avoid putting toxins into your machine. It's the same like with a car. Um, if you put bad oil in your car, it's like, going to break down. It's not going to have the best mileage. And there's even liquids you can add to your gasoline to increase the mileage on that you get on your car. It's the same way with the human body. All these nutrients and these phytochemicals and the minerals, it all helps increase the mileage on our own bodies so that they last longer. So that we can reach the longevity escape velocity. It's all about living to that point in the, in the future when we can cure aging and live forever. Something I didn't cover in this video, which I'll probably cover in a different video, I'll make a whole video about superfoods. Superfoods are an, a great, important topic for anyone that's into longevity. I will just leave you with this one superfood because it's very uh, easily available pretty much anywhere. It's chocolate. Do consume a lot of chocolate, unless you, you know, have an allergy or you're sensitive to it. If you can consume a lot of chocolate, I think that's important. Now, obviously not store-bought chocolate, not, not the stuff with, uh, you know, lots of sugar or anything like that. I'm talking about like a pure, unprocessed cocoa powder and make your own chocolate products. It's really not that hard. It's not that complicated. You can make hot chocolate. I have a recipe on this channel for hot chocolate. The link will be in the description. It's a healthy hot chocolate made from coconut oil, stevia. You can put a little honey in it. It's really healthy to eat a lot of chocolate because chocolate is super high in minerals. It's like one of the highest foods in antioxidants, and it's cheap. You know, a lot of people can't afford all these other superfoods. Like, superfoods can be pretty pricey, but chocolate is a superfood. And cocoa powder is pretty gosh darn cheap, and it's just filled with magnesium. And a lot of people are dying of heart disease and heart attacks just because they're deficient in magnesium. Chocolate's also well known to be one of the highest food sources of chromium, and chromium is used by your pancreas to help with sugar metabolism, you know, so you don't get diabetes. Chromium is very important for that, and it's the same reason people eat cinnamon for diabetes, to prevent diabetes, because it's got that chromium. Well, chocolate is high in chromium. And let's not forget that oldest living lady, Jean Calment, I think I'm pronouncing that right, she was one of the old, she was the oldest living lady at one point, and she attributed her longevity to eating two pounds of chocolate a week. That's a lot of chocolate. Some people even say that chocolate increases the flexibility of the arteries, improves circulation, uh, helps prevent dementia and Alzheimer's disease. It's just really an overall superfood. Now, one mistake I think a lot of people are making is coffee. They're drinking coffee. That's not good. Okay, coffee is a carcinogen. They roast these beans. They make them all brown. And it creates a bunch of acrylamides. Uh, it ages you. It's a carcinogen. 
Starbucks has to list, they have to actually like put signs up to say, this is a carcinogen, it could give you cancer. Coffee is really bad news. And I know it's it's gained a lot of popularity since the Bulletproof executive, oh, he started advertising, he started pushing the Bulletproof coffee. Now everyone's getting on to like the bandwagon, like I would not do it. Okay, so replace your coffee with chocolate and um, you're just gonna be much better off. I'm actually planning on making a whole video about coffee and more why it's so bad for you and why you should stop drinking coffee. I know like so many people are addicted to coffee. I plan to make a lot more videos about health. I don't want this channel to be too much philosophy and not enough health. So I'm going to get much more into health. I'm going to start talking about some of the most important supplements we could be taking and... Um, I didn't cover exercise, but expect a future video about the healthiest exercises for longevity. And also, this was so basic. Expect another video just more in-depth about different things we could be doing with our diet. Anyways, that's all for now. May you live forever. Do you know, Jane Eyre, where the wicked go after death? They go to hell. And what is hell? A pit full of fire. Should you like to fall into this pit and be burned there forever? No, sir. How might you avoid it? I must keep in good health and not die.